All right, excellent. Well, welcome to Tinkering 101 3D Printing. Uh, I have not adapted this for online viewing yet, uh, so you'll have to bear with me. We're just going to test this out and see what it'll do. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what is 3D printing, uh, where can you, what kind of technologies can you find on campus uh, specifically, and then where can you find those technologies. Uh, and then we'll dive a little bit into where can you find models in order to uh, say you just want to 3D print something. Uh, there's a lot of online uh, depositories that are for free, and then you download those models, and then you can also, I can show you how to modify those models and make them your own. Then after that, we can build something from scratch, which is always a lot of fun. All right. So I'm Sean Skelly. I'm the full-time staff member here at the Library Makerspace. Uh, my background is in jewelry primarily, and uh, this is, uh, you see, my background is much more in studio art. So uh, I've made everything from copper bowls to uh, full uh, plaster cast work. Uh, you name it, I've, I've probably done it. So if you have questions about material science and some of those sorts of things, I know that kind of aspect of it. Uh, as far as uh, manufacturing technology and that sort of thing, I started out in a commercial jewelry shop uh, where we learned CAD technology to design custom class rings. Uh, and we would design them on a computer, and then we would uh, carve them with a CNC mill, um, four axis CNC mill, on, uh, in wax. And then that would be uh, modified through a lost wax process into gold or platinum or whatever we were working with. Um, and for that, we would use Arcam Jewelsmith, um, which is a very specific uh, CAD um, design program. Um, and then in grad school, I learned Rhino 3D as, as part of an um, uh, instructor course. Uh, and then taught CAD for jewelry and kind of made up, you know, how do you introduce art students to uh, CAD programs and something that's open and rather complex as Rhino. And then, but today we'll be working with Tinkercad. So uh, that's a little, it's, uh, we've come a long way as far as CAD programs go and how accessible they are to everyone. These, this is a very easy to use program that is designed for kids primarily. So uh, you'll be able to translate everything into Legos as well as uh, Minecraft if you wanted to. Uh, but it's great for really quick, really simple, uh, uh, just CAD work. Just do quick things. Um, here's the library makerspace where I work. Uh, if you haven't been, you should go and go ahead and visit the library homepage. Um, this will give you what our hours are. Let's go ahead and uh, move to that. Let's see. Let's see if the internet is working. It might be a little bit slow since I am doing media site at the same time. Um, so let's see. Here I am. So you want to go up to Spaces and Technologies at the top, and then you want to, under Labs and Studios, you want to go to Makerspace. So here is our homepage. You can see we had reduced hours during spring break, um, but now we're back to seven days a week, uh, generally 10 to 6 on uh, weekdays, Monday through Friday, and then 2 to 8 on Saturday and Sunday. We're in room 132 on the ground floor of the library, so if you look, you'll see all those computers there, and we're kind of tucked away in offices off to the side. Uh, and you always want to reach to us, reach out to us. Uh, you can just walk in when we're, whenever we're open, or you can always shoot us an email at makeattu.edu. Excellent. All right. So in this uh, presentation, I do have uh, some links to different things people have done uh, with 3D printing, and you can take a look at those if you'd like. Uh, for time, we're going to go ahead and skip through those. So when you think about 3D printing, basically it falls under the umbrella of additive manufacturing. So you're making something by building up layers and layers of some material. Um, versus uh, something like CNC milling, where uh, that stands for computer numerical controlled milling, where you're telling the computer, um, or the machine rather, uh, with a computer to go in a certain path and carve away from a big block. So that's more of a reductive process, and what we're talking about today is going to be more uh, focused on additive process. But there's a lot of crossover in, as far as uh, how this technology works, whether it's in uh, subtractive or reductive. You can generally usually start out with a CAD model of some sort. So. Most printers you're going to find uh, are going to be in the FFF style, the fused filament fabrication. So you're just taking a filament uh, of plastic, and then you're melting it on top of itself and building up layers and layers. But here on Tech Campus especially, you'll find three different categories of 3D printers, uh, different styles of printing, per se. So you have powder, you have resin, you have filament. So powder, the way powder works, um, you'll see uh, a thin layer of, of powder get deposited down, and then you have uh, basically like an inkjet printer comes down and mixes up uh, different colored binders in order to wherever you want the object to build. So it would stick those uh, powdered pieces together, and then you'd put down another layer of powder, and then you'd reapply. It would come back and reapply the, uh, the binder again. So when you look online and you see someone's 3D printed themselves and, um, or scanned themselves and 3D printed themselves in full color, usually this is the process they're, they're using or the type of printer that they're going to use. So the powder is like a cornstarch-based or it's a gypsum-based powder. And um, so when you hold it together with a little bit of ink, um, 
it's not really going to hold together that well. So it's great for prototyping and, and rapidly making something. Um, but as far as something that's going to be really uh, durable, it's not necessarily the best uh, material for that. Uh, so once it's done layering the layers of, <laughs> it's building up the layers of, um, of powder and uh, binder, then you kind of excavate it out and dust it off. And then you have to, uh, because that binder is strong, but not that strong, as I was saying, uh, you want to stabilize it. So what you do is you kind of dip it in either a, a hot wax or a super glue or a cyanacrylate. So that stabilizes your model. So you'll see this uh, for very fast, uh, relatively inexpensive modeling purposes for like the auto automotive industry or architecture. Uh, here on campus, you'll be able to find this at the architecture um, building.